The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. Happy Sunday, everyone. On this third Sunday of Easter, great to be with you, and it's fantastic to have back once again Father Chris Hughes came up from the Cape. He's uh, serving the great people in Centerville and Osterville and the young people at uh, St. John Paul II School in uh, Hyannis. So it's great to have Father Chris back. And also, if you uh, live or vacation on the Cape, and you know uh, that Monsignor Tosti, Monsignor Ron Tosti, died uh, this past week. God rest his soul. And I know Father Chris is going to offer the Mass for him today, being from uh, Christ the King Parish himself. So Father Chris, great to see you. Could you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Bishop. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murder be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that this, his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Just God, you really. 
a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps this word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke glory to you o Lord the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread while they were still speaking about this he stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you but they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost then he said to them why are you troubled and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Growing up, whenever I was stressed or worried about something, my mother would always say to me, it's going to be okay. And even as adults, when we stress or worry, we like to be reassured that things are going to be okay in a time of uncertainty. Well, in today's gospel reading, the two disciples, in a moment of uncertainty, are reassured by Jesus himself that it is going to be okay. And he reminds them that he will be a part of every Christian community until the end of time. Jesus appears to the apostles, and his first words are, Peace be with you. He gives them his peace because they were in turmoil, confusion, and guilt. Remember, these followers had abandoned him and denied him despite their strong claims that they would do otherwise. They knew that they had betrayed their master, so that they were, they were sorry, but they couldn't turn back the clock. Jesus knows of their repentance. And so he comes now and says to them, peace be with you, to let them know that they were forgiven. This is why their fear turned into joy. Jesus is telling them, that it is going to be okay. And that question that Jesus poses then to the apostles can certainly apply to you and to me today. Why are you troubled? Friends, what troubles us? What areas of my life do I need the peace of Christ? Am I troubled by something I did in the past that I can't get rid of, I can't let go of, I doubt God's forgiveness? 
Am I troubled by a present situation, whether it be health, familial, a friend, financial, or, or work-related? Am I troubled by the darkness in this world, death, destruction, division? As people of faith, we know this is how we live the Paschal mystery. We all face small deaths in life, everyday struggles. In fact, we all need to die to self in order to rise with Christ. But the Paschal mystery, the risen Christ, the resurrection, and Easter reminds us that it's going to be okay. It's a glimmer of hope when life feels so hopeless. That's how we can put the joy of Easter into action. That's why we keep hearing these post-resurrection appearances during the Easter season. In fact, Jesus left us the sacraments as a reminder that things are going to be okay as a reminder of his peace. He left us the Eucharist, where, where Jesus is present. Think of all of us watching right now from all over the country. And we can reflect on the fact that the risen Lord is at work in each of our lives with our own story, our own needs, our own aspirations, and he is present completely to each of us. He comes to each one of us in the Eucharist with the graces that we need for our lives. Christ's real presence, then, is truly an Easter gift. Or look at the sacrament of reconciliation, forgiveness. And we know that forgiveness and repentance go hand in hand. As Jesus reminds us today, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. Friends, no matter what we may have done, no matter what is in our past, our repentance can bring about new life, healing, forgiveness, and peace. As Peter said in the first reading, repent that your sins may be wiped away. That peace comes from forgiveness. That's another Easter gift to the apostles and to us. Indeed, everything will be okay. And this is something that we need to be reminded of over and over again as disciples, as Christians, and as Easter people. And so, friends, as we gather around the table of the Lord on this third Sunday of Easter, physically apart, though spiritually connected, may we ask the risen Lord for peace, whatever troubles us. May we see the power that the risen Christ has over the darknesses in our lives. May we be assured of this through the reception of the Eucharist and through the reception of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Because the Paschal mystery promises us a glimmer of hope, even when life seems so dark and confusing. Indeed, Jesus reminds the apostles and you and me that no matter what uncertainties we are facing, that everything is going to be okay. Peace be with you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As we hear his word in the scriptures, our hearts burn within us with a longing for God's presence. And with this Easter hope, let us express our needs in prayer that those who teach in the church will remain faithful to the gospel of repentance and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That leaders of church, government, and industry will work together to provide food, employment, and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
that those who are dying may know the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to grant these prayers through your risen Son, the glorious Prince of Life, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. In the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I just want to say a word of thanks to my father, Dan Hughes, who was the uh, lector today. So if you notice some resemblance, it's not the magic of television, it's, it's the actual truth. So great to have my dad taking the ride up from the Cape today as well. And thanks to Bishop Reed and the staff here at Catholic TV, as always, for their hospitality. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. We have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.